J.D. Irving Limited has collaborated with the University of New Brunswick to produce a comprehensive report on carbon balance of JDI woodlands and forest products operations. JDI Research and Development Manager Greg Adams says the collaboration with UNB was a great experience. The people that were involved in the project, uh, Dr. Dr. David McLean was overseeing the project. The, the work was conducted by postdoctoral fellow uh, Chris Henniger, Dr. Chris Henniger, and, uh, and graduate student Ryan Cameron. And these guys worked very, very closely with, uh, with a number of, of our, our staff to, to really understand the process and, and how that fits into the whole carb, carbon uh, modeling exercise. A peer-reviewed study about the carbon balance at JDI Woodlands and Forest Products Operations has been published in the May edition of the Journal of Forestry, the most widely circulated scholarly forestry journal in the world. JDI began this work several years ago. It wanted to look at all of its operations and combine them together to look at the overall carbon balance. So we wanted to include everything from our forests and how our forests are projected to grow over the next uh, 100 years, uh, the activities that go on in the forest, harvesting, transportation, and right through to um, manufacturing and sawmills and pulp and paper mills. And, and then beyond that, the fate of, of the products that are being produced. For instance, uh, the carbon, it remains stored in lumber for a very long time. And as well, we included the energy sources that are, is used in all our manufacturing. So what is the profile of the energy that's used to run the mills and, and so forth? Dr. Chris Henniger says the JDI approach is unique in understanding forest carbon dynamics. There's a lot of folks out there that are doing very holistic um, life cycle accounting of forest operations. Um, but I think that this is one of the, the first studies to take such a detailed look at a very vertically integrated company across all pools um, and also include the pulp and paper manufacturing um, emissions within that profile. And that's a huge emission uh, source. And in a lot of other life cycle analysis of forest management activities, that particular pool has been left out. A better understanding of forest carbon dynamics gives JDI a meaningful set of tools to manage its carbon balance in the future. It's a very complex um, web of interrelated things that need to come together in order to come to some kind of meaningful decision about how best to manage our forests. And that's, that was the overriding goal of this project, was to be able to do that. So we've learned that uh, um, using the best accounting that we can, we can come up with, with all our processes, that we will be, on average, sinking about over a million tons of carbon dioxide equivalents for in the next 50 years. Uh, and and that's, that's including everything from forest growth through, through our manufacturing and, and products produced. Within the next 50 years, we're expecting around 92 million tons of carbon to be sequestered into that forest. And that's largely a result of um, the intensive civiculture that's going on in that land base today, um, the sustainable harvest level target, um, and, and initially young forest age class structure that we're really starting out with. 92 million tons of carbon locked up in JDI growing forests. In a large part due to JDI's 60-year history of planting trees. Almost 900 million seedlings to date. A national record. The model also looked at carbon stored in forest products. But also carbon emissions from the forest operations and manufacturing. Including third-party manufacturing and methane emissions from landfills. Overall, if you were to add these pools up together, we arrive at, after 50 years, uh, 58 million tons of carbon sequestered or stored or a, a net balance. Um, so that bodes quite well in terms of just, if we look at current atmospheric conditions today, in terms of what's going on from a company-wide perspective, even, even if we consider the methane emissions at the landfill as a result of producing those products, um, the overall land base after 50 years is a, is a net greenhouse gas sink of about 58 million tons. 
Beyond the 50-year window, modeling indicates the company will remain a sink or carbon neutral for many more years based on today's forest management, processes, products, and energy profiles. JDI is committed to continuous improvement across all operations, including environmental performance, which will result in further benefits from the standpoint of reducing net greenhouse gas emissions. JDI plans out its sustainable forest management for a hundred years. So JDI planners will use the carbon model developed by Dr. Henniger's postdoctoral work, as well as the work by Ryan Cameron's master's thesis. In the end, Henniger says it was JDI's collaborative approach with the university and researchers that led to this first-of-its-kind working model. So we had 10 or 12 individuals that provided a lot of information to this project and there's just absolutely no way that uh, we would have been able to come to the resolution of uh, quantitative information we have at our fingertips, fingertips now for greenhouse gas accounting if it were not for that cooperation. And personally, I've learned a lot from the experience in the sense that uh, I'm a forester and a forest manager, that's my expertise, and um, I learned a lot about manufacturing, so in-depth understanding of exactly all the wood, wood flows throughout all of JDI's operations, and uh, that's provided me with um, experience that I'm going to take throughout my career, so that's been great.